So I've got a bit of a short brawl here that I wanted to just look at in some detail. I want to go over what I'm thinking, what I'm doing, how I'm positioning my ship to succeed. Because this brawl in this game might not have been the craziest damage number, but I think uh, my positioning was very, very, very good in this match. And it's probably why we won this flank. Uh, otherwise, we probably would have lost it. You can see it's basically just the two of us here um, against a destroyer and a couple of battleships and an anchorage as well which anchorage if you didn't know is a pretty dangerous ship um <laughs> easily one of the best tier set tier eight cruisers uh in my opinion it's really 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 ridiculously strong so i've put myself in a pretty bad position uh 10 minutes has gone by in this game already and i've only done 14,000 damage so i haven't really impacted the game much i've just been here holding at a and getting torped by a destroyer so I want to specifically focus on this island. I'm using this island as a way to limit the number of people shooting at me. I'm trying to limit the anchorage from shooting at me. I'm trying to limit the two Amagis from shooting at me. Um, hopefully we can kill this Benson here who's been pretty annoying this entire game, as he should be. He's in a destroyer. It's, it's his job to annoy battleships. And there we go, we get the blind shot. So now we don't have to worry about Torps as much. But, but crucially, as we can see on the minimap, the Amagi is pushing. I'm also reversing out uh, broadside on to the other Amagi. There's two of them. But there's one really close pushing up into A. So we need to start going forward right now. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to get flanked, and that will not go well at all. So we finally notice it. We start going forward and uh, pop our plane just to get a little bit of information about the Amagi coming around the corner. And turns out we're just in time going forward because, well, that Amaki was ready to shoot at us. And in fact, he does. So we need to just hold around this island. Um, something to worry about, of course, is the cross shots from the Alabama as well as potential torpedoes from the Anchorage. He has 10.5 kilometer torpedoes, I believe. And, well, they hit pretty hard. So if we can help it, we definitely don't want to take one. That's why I'm turning in around this island. I'm trying to create space here for the Amagi to push into, as well as uh, get away from the crossfire from the Alabama. Because Alabama's got some pretty strong guns, and I don't feel like uh, standing in front of those very much. This trap we're setting is based on our Kansas positioning, by the way. I'm trying to play around him. Uh, here come the torpedoes, and unfortunately, we end up eating one on our torpedo belt. Fortunately, that it is on the torpedo belt, so it only does 9k damage. Um, but still, that's 9k that I could have used. The Anchorage plays this really well by shooting right before he goes behind the island, hoping to get a fire. Um, our damage control is still up, though. So I'm getting ready for him to pop out, maybe make a mistake. Uh, since we're still plane spotted, I'm assuming he's going to shoot again. And I was hoping I could get a blind shot, or he would pop out, and I'd be able to shoot him again. Um, but that's not the case, and he ends up lighting a fire right after our damage control runs out. A little bit unlucky. So what we need to do now, we can't sit in front of a fire starter, right? We can't sit here in front of an anchorage just spotted. We'll get farmed out really quickly. So it's time to reverse. Uh, time to disengage from the anchorage, take a closing blind shot uh, while we're waiting for the Amagi to enter into our trap. Um, if he's smart and aware he's going to stop there stalling our points but he won't push around until the kansas is dead the kansas is on low hp um so the one amagi here is playing it smart uh taking the 1v1 or the 1v2 putting my kansas at a severe disadvantage actually kansas is a decent hp on our flank sorry i thought i was looking at the health on uh, the upper left and i saw one of the kansas was at low hp so he's at pretty high hp but he'll still die under the focus fire of two battleships for sure uh, but the other Amagi jumps into the trap, so whether he didn't know I was here, or he wasn't paying attention, or he just thought the game was over and just time to yellow in and get damage. Regardless, this is the point of using this island to try and take 1v1s, catching people's broadsides, killing them off with uh, our Kansas friend. Uh, the lightning unfortunately lights another fire on us. Um, in one of the first hits he gets, which is a little unfortunate as well. And there goes the Kansas. So now we're alone versus a lightning. 
um, as well as the Amagi. So how are we going to play this? Well, we have to go forward. We can't just sit uh, in front of an Amagi. That's not going to go well. So what we're doing is we're trying to use the island as much as possible, right? So the Amagi is coming around. He has to lead in front of my ship in order to hit me. I need to lead in front of his ship in order to hit him. Very basic, I know. But what I'm trying to explain here is that I have a massive advantage here. I'm lower on HP, I'm in a two or three V1, but I can use these islands to isolate some 1v1s here. So the lightning, he's on his way behind the island, so we don't really have to worry about him. We got our secondaries on him just in case he decides to sit still and farm us. That's the best thing secondaries can do these days against destroyers. Um, they basically kind of prevent someone from just sitting there and farming you in the open water. But back to the Umagi, we're pushing around this island um, just quick enough to keep out of his gun range or his gun sights. And I'm trying to keep him within my gun sights. So I'm just trying to edge around this corner very slowly, just trying to keep the Amagi um, so that at least my back turret can shoot him while I'm pushing around the island. And uh, the Amagi won't be able to shoot me back. We're trying to uh, make sure the health pools are a little bit more equalized. We're trying to claw back a bit of an advantage. So as we push around here, we have to keep in mind the Anchorage. He still has um, the ability to do a lot of damage to us, right? His HE is really painful, and uh, we're on low enough HP that a couple fires could definitely kill us as we're using our last heal. Um, so, something to note here that's very important is where I'm positioning my mouse cursor, okay? And the goal is to keep the rear turret pointed directly behind me, and my front turret's pointed directly in front of me. You can do this by swapping your crosshair, or where your mouse is pointing, back and forth across your bow. This keeps your rear turret constantly turning to try and get to the side that your mouse is pointing at. So you can see my rear turret's coming around to the right at the moment. Well, if we put our mouse to the left, the rear turret comes around to the left. I'm trying to keep that rear turret focused on the Amagi while keeping my front turrets pointed in a way that will be able to shoot the Anchorage when he pops up. I'm not getting baited by shooting the Eden um, because he's not as big of a threat. We can angle to that. His AP is not as big a deal. We need to keep our guns ready for the Anchorage. And now because of our management of our turrets, we're able to turn quickly to get a shot on the Anchorage as he's uh, going to slow down at low health. So we basically put the crosshair right on him. Again, time bought by us rounding the island, turning sharply, gives us time to get our back turret, which we've been managing, on to the Amagi. We kill the Anchorage, Amagi comes out flat broadside, we kill the Amagi, double strike, and uh, a nice little end to that brawl, huh? I thought that was a pretty great example of how to use an island, how to outplay the enemy team even when you're at a pretty severe disadvantage. Um, that turret management trick, um, or I don't know about trick, but ability, is something that you have to really consciously focus on. Um, otherwise, your turrets will quickly just rotate around to whatever side you're pointing at. So you're constantly swapping it back and forth. And it can be very useful, as you saw in this game. So I hope you enjoyed that brawl um, and me dissecting it a little bit, pausing things, explaining things, that kind of thing. Um, and if you like that kind of thing, let me know. Uh, we might do we might do more of that um, with some different ships and different plays that I've made. I can stop and explain things a little bit more in depth if, uh, if that's what you guys are looking for. I know some of you will be asking for the build. Uh, I know I just did a Massachusetts video, but... Here's the build I'm actually using. I'm trying out the uh, AA build I talked about in my Ohio video on a Massachusetts. And it seems to work okay. Not quite as good on the uh, Massachusetts as it did on the Ohio. But uh, I need to test it more. I haven't actually played that much against carriers with it. But uh, something you could do is a build like this. This is another option for a, uh, a Massachusetts build. Is something along these lines. Running Ayafichi allows you to pen lower tier battleships, same tier light cruisers, higher tier light cruisers, with your uh, secondaries. And that can be a pretty fun thing to do. Um, not always will it be good, it's mainly good in a, when you're top tier, 
but uh, it can be a fun one to go for. If you're not as interested in that, you could go Vigilance or uh, Grease the Gears or any number of these Tier 2 perks. And you retain your fire chance then on your main guns and your secondaries. Um, running close quarters combat is okay. Um, I don't actually really like this skill. I think it goes too far in on damage output and doesn't focus on survivability as much. So if you're going for a kind of all-out brawler secondary build, I would actually go with Emergency Repair Expert. You tend to go through your heals very quickly because of the very fast cooldown on the heals. So running this, or even concealment to uh, allow you to get closer to the enemy before you're spotted, things like that, can uh, definitely help you out in a brawl more than Close Quarters Expert could. So that's uh, that's the kind of captain thoughts quickly for a Massachusetts, and then uh, I think these are pretty standard upgrades. I think we all know that. So thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed, and uh, have a great day.